Hello guys, gals, non-binary pals, and welcome back to Weekly Wildlife Wisdom. Let's go ahead and get right into it. Starting off, we have the giant squid, which is a species of deep ocean dwelling squid in the family Arcutinutheidae. Giant squid can grow to a tremendous size, offering an example of deep sea gigantism. Recent estimates put its size between 40 and 60 feet in length and over one ton in weight. Despite, despite being such a size, the giant squid is not top of the food chain and is regularly preyed upon by both sperm whales and pilot whales, with juveniles having shown uh, evidence of being hunted by things such as large fish and small sharks. As well as there is some cannibalism uh, just having been documented with them attacking each other when food is scarce. The giant squid is widespread, occurring in all the world's oceans. It is usually found near continental and island slopes, such as those found near Newfoundland, the British Isles, Japan, South Africa, Australia, and New Zealand, typically at depths between 900 and 3,300 feet. The giant squid and its counterpart, the colossal squid, are the real-life inspiration behind the mythical monster known as the Kraken. Next up, we have the Arctic wolf. Also known as the white wolf or the polar wolf, it is a subspecies of gray wolf native to Canada, Greenland, and Alaska. The Arctic wolf is relatively unafraid of people to the point where the wolves on Ellesmere Island frequently approach humans with rampant curiosity. In the wild, arctic wolves primarily prey upon musk oxen and arctic hares. They have also been found to prey on lemmings, caribou, arctic foxes, birds, and beetles. They have occasional run-in with polar bears, wherein polar bears will kill arctic wolves, and arctic wolves will kill young polar bears. Uh, it has also been found out that the arctic wolves scavenge through garbage. This, is possibly, this possibly explains their curiosity of humans associating with them, them with food. The average pack size of the wolves is around four individuals with packs of five or more being incredibly rare. Arctic wolves are endangered due to their low population densities, smaller pack sizes, infrequent reproduction, and lower offspring reproduction. Well, lower offspring production. Next up is the bearded vulture, also known as the larmingeer, the huma bird, and the Osferich. It is a bird of prey and the only known member of the genus Gypetus. Its closest living relative is the Egyptian vulture. And the bearded vulture is native to the European Alps, the Caucasus, the Himalayas, and the mountains of Ethiopia, where it eats an almost exclusively bone diet, something that is fairly unique amongst vertebrates, particularly birds. At around three and a half feet tall and 15 pounds, and boasting a wingspan of around nine feet, is one of the larger old world vultures. Unlike multiple, most vultures, the bearded vulture does not have a bald head. Its neck and powerful is its neck is powerful and thick, and has a generally elongated, slender shape, sometimes appearing bulkier due to its often hunch, hunched back posture. Deering mating and the territorial and breeding display between bearded vultures is often spectacular, involving the showing of talons, tumbling, and spiraling while in solo flight. The large birds also regularly lock their feet with each other and fall some distance through the sky with each other, breaking off with, from one another before impact with the ground, like other similar birds of prey. Marathus volanus, or the peacock spider, is a species of jumping spider in the family. This is a species of the jumping spider family, belonging to the genus Maratatus or Maratus. Unlike most spiders, male and female peacock spiders are roughly the same size. By contrast, females are cryptically colored, usually molted brown and beige, while the peacock is bright, vivid blue, greens. Uh, reds and pinks, pinks and purples. During courtship, the male peacock spider will raise his abdomen and wave it at a female in secrecy with his third pair of legs. 
This species was one of the first observed arthropods to display homosexual tendencies, as male spiders will often practice their courtship displays with each other before pursuing females. Next up is the striped hyena, which is a species of hyena native to North and East Africa, the Middle East, and the Caucasus, in Central Asia and the European subcontinent. It is the smallest and least social of the true hyenas, and retains many primitive vivarid varanid characteristics, lost in the larger species such as the spotted and the brown hyenas. Having a smaller and less specialized skull, it is near completely nocturnal, and although primarily a scavenger, large specimens have been known to kill their own prey. Attacks on humans have occurred on rare instances. Uh, it is also known to feign death to escape attacks from other larger animals. The striped hyena is a monogamous animal, with both males and females assisting one another in raising their cubs. Uh, the hyena, this hyena features prominently in Middle Eastern Asian and Asian folklore, as well as the Hebrew Bible. It is often depicted as messengers of the spirits. In some areas, its body parts are considered magical and are used as charms or talismans to commune with the dead. The pumpkin seed fish is a North American freshwater fish of the sunfish family of an order Percliformis. It is referred to as the pond perch, the common sunfish, the pumpkin fish, the pumpkey, the sunfish, sunny, and the kyber. The coloration of the pumpkin seed is one of the most vibra vibrant of any freshwater fish and can range from an olive green or brown to a bright orange and blue. Growing up to about a hundred, uh, one pound in weight and a foot long, pumpkin seeds typically live in warm, calm lakes, ponds, and pools of creeks and small rivers, where there is plenty of vegetation. They prefer clean water with plenty of hiding places. They often school with bluegill and other sunfish, feeding upon insects, mosquito larvae, smaller mollusks, crustaceans, worms, and minnows. They themselves are preyed upon by large fish such as the bass, the pike, and the gar, the snapping turtle, mergazers, which are a type of waterfowl, herons, cormorants, and river otters. And our extinct animal of the week is the Ceratosaurus, which is a carnivorous three-horned theropod dinosaur native to the late Jurassic period. This genus was first described in 1884 by American paleontologist Ortheal Charles Marsh. It is known from North America Portugal, Switzerland, and Tanzania, Africa, these being obviously distinct species. With unique deep jaws and a distinct four-fingered hands, Ceratosaurus was, is the founding member of the order Ceratosauria, which would give rise to the later dinosaurs such as the Albilosaurus, such as Abilosaurus, and Carnotaurus. Ceratosaurus is known to frequently have ecosystems with other super predators, such as Torvosaurus and the Lion of the Jurassic, Allosaurus. Because of this, it is hypothesized that Ceratosaurus filled a role similar to his hyena to avoid competing for the same niche, and was likely more of a scavenger. But there is also considerable evidence to show that Ceratosaurus spent a large amount of time around water where it could have hunted animals such as fish, crocodilians, and turtles. As always, have a wonderful day to my guys, gals, non-binary pals.